If you're an Emis user, do you want to save yourself an hour and a half a day? That's right, time is really precious. And in this video, we're going to share with you a product that's going to help you basically save loads and loads of time. It's shared with us by a group called Robodocs with Dr. Natalie Martin and basically solves a problem that's unique to Emis and hopefully will mean that your life is so much easier. Check out the information at info at robodocs.co.uk and let's get straight to that video that shows you everything you need to know. Let's tech enhance your primary care and learning. So as you learners, we're joined by Dr. Nat Martin and she's going to talk us through this lovely new product and show us how hopefully you can save a lot more time using Emis. New world for me, but take it away Nat, tell us about yourself first of all. Hi, so I'm Nat Martin, I'm a GP partner at a 15,000 patient practice in East Yorkshire. Um, yeah. Um, and so you've been showing me this kind of uh, tool that you've got to use an Emis, which uh, I appreciate when you had to explain to me, you had to explain the problem because it seems like this is not a problem for system one users but an absolute nightmare for emis users yeah so um the functionality on emis for signing scripts means that you have to sign each script individually and each individual signing requires multiple button cl clicks and scrolling so for us um on a monday for example we have 500 mm. prescriptions to sign so that's a lot of GP time. So on a Monday, it takes at least two hours to go through and manually sign them ourselves. Um, and so um, we, I, I was signing scripts one evening at home um, because rarely did we have chance to sign them in the day, given the length of time they're taking. Um, and moaning to this about this to my husband, whose background is IT, and um, he mentioned about automation. So that's something we put our heads together and discussed. And then we decided that we would automate the like monotonous button clicking process um, using some industry standard technology and my husband's programming skills. And it kind of went from there. Okay. okay. So as I said, this sounds like a slightly foreign concept for me because I know when I try and sign my EPS scripts, it's literally just select, do the kind of query bit, you know, the complicated bit, get them all ready to go and then select and then sign and then that should be it theoretically. Yeah. Quick browse just to make sure the meds are suitable and sensible and stuff. It sounds like it's a lot more complicated. Probably worthwhile if we show everyone what it does and how it works and stuff. Is that going to be sensible? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Um, so basically, I'll just give you a bit of background on how it works and then I'll show the demo video. Um, so um, it basically emulates the um, actions of a GP. So the actions that a GP would normally take in signing the repeat prescriptions on EMIS. So the prescriptions have already been assessed as suitable by a clinician at the point that they were added to the patient's repeat list. And the automation just uses its capabilities to recognize um, buttons and prompts on the screen and reacts to them in a standardized way just to mimic what a GP would do usually. Um, the good thing about the automation is that it doesn't get bored, it doesn't make human errors, and it's a lot cheaper than a GP. Um, so yeah, do you want to, I'll run the demo, okay. So, what you can see, um, yeah. So this is the familiar Emis Web awaiting signing screen. So then it, it's launching the signer, and it's choosing some options, and then it asks for your user pin. And then after that, everything you're seeing now is automated. So this is what a user would usually be doing, but this is done entirely by the automation software. So you can just leave it be to do this itself. And what it will do is it will beep at you for occasional action. So for example, if someone's methotrexate has been requested earlier, it'll beep at you to get you to manually authorize that. And if you've had the option put on to, to pause for the DMAD drugs, it'll beep at you then so you can check the DMAD drugs are appropriate. Um, and yeah, you have the option to pause it using Alt P or turn it off using Alt Q. Um, and it will just go through and sign all your scripts for you. And you can then get on with other tasks, um, do your tasks and bloods um, using another computer um, or whatever else you want to do. Sometimes I run it in meetings. Sometimes I run it while I'm cooking dinner on an evening. But basically, it's saving me a lot of time. Awesome. So you mentioned, obviously, it's kind of going on in the background and stuff. but it still allows you to do other things with how have you found 
for this changing things for you in practice? Okay, so it's just it's just freeing me up and saving me time in that um, now I can run this signer on a computer at work. It just does its own thing and the scripts are signed. And that time I can now spend clearing my tasks and bloods. Um, so whereas before I would have to do all the signing script signing and then I'd come home and have to start my tasks and bloods because they'd not got done in the day. Now it's freeing that hour and a half to two hours up so I can get all my other stuff done or I can have a practice meeting um, um, basically you can do anything you would have usually done as a clinician in that space of time yeah like maybe have lunch or go to loo as well yeah, like, or go home early have lunch. Yeah, like seriously have lunch get a drink um, feel a bit more human so it sounds like it's really going to save time in terms of using the auto now and stuff so if people were interested in looking at this um, what's the kind of onboarding process like in terms of you know getting it from you guys onto the computers and using it and stuff how would you describe right. that yeah, so it's, it's pretty simple, really. Um, so um, the, the process is um, you tell us, yay, we would like this. We send you out um, an order form. You fill in your practice details. It gets some information about the way your EMIS looks at the top for your practice name. Um, get that back to us. Then we send you a link to download the um, software and a licensing file. Um, and in some areas, that will be the end of it. You'll get it on your computer. You can run it straight away, no problem. In some areas, it, it is that your IT needs to put it on for you. Um, and once again, a bit of variability. So some IT providers, no questions, it just goes straight on. Other IT providers might need a bit more information. Some have sent us a form to fill out um, or had some email exchanges with us or the user. But so far, everywhere we've had that process, it's been approved. So it's pretty simple, really. And how many different areas across the country are you currently running it in? So we're running it in um, five different areas at the minute. And in terms of cost, I guess there's going to be always those questions. How much would this cost for a practice to take on? Yeah, so we've tried to keep it as like really fairly cheap um, because we we want to we want to help general practice and we want but we need to cover our costs because obviously this is taking us time to produce and implement. Um, so our costs are. Um, there's an initial installation charge of £295 and then the ongoing yearly licensing um, fee of £7 p per patient per year. And for an average size practice in the UK, that works out as a total cost of less than £1,000. Um, so we think it offers good value for money given that's just a one, one day locum fee. Well, yeah, I guess you mentioned that, you know, previously those 500 scripts would take you about an hour and a half to two hours. So potentially you're looking at making your money back with under two weeks. Yeah, exactly. Good. We did the math and it worked out that at 1.5 hours a day time saving, that would be £35,000 a year saved at £90 an hour locum costs. So Awesome. So if people did want to have a look at this product and, and you know, kind of access it and download it, what's the best way for them to contact you? Um, so at the minute, it, the way to contact us is through our email, which is info at robodocs.co.uk we also have a facebook page robodox automation and a website which should be launching next week awesome and for those that do want to access that if you want the links to those i'll pop them down below and you'll be able to access it and have a look at it from there thank you for that now it looks like a really interesting product i must admit a little bit alien to me but definitely massively hits up on that whole prospect of using automation to make life a lot easier a lot more sensible we should see what you guys develop next as well. So hopefully there'll be more. Oh to come. yeah, we've definitely got things on the way. Awesome. Thank you for your time. And hopefully everyone else will be able to catch more content. And if you do want to have a look, look right this way. I've got my camera's wrong way around. And we'll be in more content there for you to have a look.